Round and round the windmill hut goes, but when did it start? No one knows. Or do we? One of the most famous songs from one of the most famous instruments in the Legend of Zelda comes from one of the most famous games, Ocarina of Time. The Song of Storms has for many years been heralded as not only one of the catchiest tunes from the entire franchise, but also the one shrouded in the most mysterious of backstories. In the game, Link is taught the song as an adult by this angry little man in a windmill hut, who claims that a mean kid from seven years years ago played it and it messed up the windmill. Fast forward a bit, or should I say rewind a bit, and it's revealed that the mean kid from seven years ago was none other than Link himself. As a kid, who plays the song he was taught from seven years in the future, teaching the angry man for the first time in the past the song of storms when it was none other than the angry man himself who taught Link seven years later. What oh. nonsense is this, you ask? Well, this is referred to as a bootstrap paradox, which is purely theoretical, mind you. In other words, a paradox of time travel where a particular event seems to have created itself with no discernible origin point. It's like saying which came first, the chicken or the egg? Can you have an egg without a chicken laying it? Or can you have a chicken without hatching out of an egg? You get what I'm saying. But if these paradoxes, like the Song of Storms, are purely theoretical, how could I possibly claim to have solved it? Huh, <laughs> well. I'm glad you asked. So by the way, before I delve into the meat of the video, if you like Ocarina of Time and the, you know, Ocarina of Time from said game, you may enjoy this theory I made recently on the origins of that legendary instrument. In which case, I'll link to it in the description below and put a card on the screen right here. Also, to those of you watching, which is you right now, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I've been looking at my analytics over the past, oh, forever, and it looks like only about 9% of my viewers come from subscribers, meaning the vast vast majority of you who enjoy my content regularly aren't actually subscribed. So if you've been enjoying my content so far, make sure you hit that button with the bell on so that you don't miss out on all the upcoming goodness. Speaking of which, be sure to keep an eye out on your notifications for some really special stuff coming real soon. But anyway, to start the theory off, I am going to reference what no doubt many of you who know the games well are already expecting, the sequel to Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. Yes, in the direct sequel to Ocarina of Time, there exists a very peculiar peculiar clue that at first glance seems way too obvious to be true, but bear with me, I need to set some things up first. So for those who are unfamiliar, Majora's Mask takes place in the land of Termina, which is a land that exists in a different universe than the Hyrule of Ocarina of Time. Now, explaining all of that would be a different, already thought out theory entirely, so moving onward with this logic, because it is a different yet parallel universe, there are certain parallels between the two. And one of these parallels is the counterpart characters present all over the place in Termina. You've got the counterpart citizens, counterpart witches, and even counterpart angry dude named Guru Guru. But the ones that I'll be focusing on in this video are the counterpart composer brothers, known as Sharp and Flat. In Ocarina of Time, the brothers, <clears throat> which I have another really good theory about in the description below, are revealed to be deceased musical scientists who served the royal family by conducting songs with magical properties, such as the Song of Time or the Sun Song. In Majora's Mask, the brothers are mostly the same, except for the fact that one of them sold their soul to the devil and is now evil. Yeah, no joke, Sharp literally sold his soul to the devil and imprisoned his brother Flat, then proceeded to attempt to suck the life out of Link with a death song when they first meet. Yeah, Majora's Mask is kinda dark, but anyway, here's where this story of the brothers ties in directly to the Song of Storms. When you meet Flat, which is the brother that's imprisoned, he teaches you a song that is meant to heal his brother's curse. And can you guess what this song is? Yeah none other than the Song of Storms. Now let me ask you this, in a game that already primarily features healing sorrows with the Song of Healing, why in the world would they add in this already well-known song and distinctly have it used to heal instead of the Song of Healing? If you play the Song of Healing for Sharp, he even directly comments on the music, admitting it's soothing but not that soothing, ultimately having no effect on him. And yet, the Song of Storms is the one that breaks his curse. It's such a definitive move from the developer that it's impossible to be simple convenience, right? And because it's such a distinct addition to the lore of the Zelda franchise, we must consider the fact that we now have an origin story for the song. So here we have an origin story, but obviously some major pieces for this theory are still missing. I mean, how did the song get back to Hyrule from Termina? And then how was it taught to the angry guy who taught it to Link, who taught it to the angry guy? Well, let's fast forward to the next game in the timeline for a clue. In Twilight Princess, Link, the hero of Twilight, meets his ancestor, the hero of time, who has been dead now for a while 
while. <clears throat> and I also have a pretty cool theory about him too. Man, I keep plugging my own videos. Well, you get to doing this for a while and eventually you'll start to have theories bleed over into each other. But anyway, the Hero of Time, also known as the Dead Hero Shade, is present with the Hero of Twilight in Hyrule. Meaning he obviously made it back to Hyrule, as we see at the end of Majora's Mask, and then grew old and died somehow. But the point being, he made it back to Hyrule with the knowledge of the Song of Storms. So here it is. What if the force that introduced the song to the Bootstrap Paradox in the first place was none other than Link himself? But not in the way that you're thinking. What if when Link was sent back in time at the end of the game to before any of the events transpired, before the Windmill Hut was messed up from the Song of Storms, he didn't bother teaching it to the Angry Man and headed off on his Majora adventure immediately. But when he eventually returned to Hyrule from Termina, as it is heavily implied in Twilight Princess, he remembered that in order for the future adult timeline himself to be successful, he has to teach the angry man the Song of Storms. After all, he can't leave the entire adult timeline hanging, so he teaches the Song of Storms from Termina to the angry windmill guy, which makes the future adult Link timeline able to learn the song. And when adult timeline Link goes back to child timeline Link before any of the events transpired, he again already knows the song and can teach it to the angry man once more. <gasps> That was a very long sentence. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dude, Mass and Dinabana, isn't that still a cycle? And yes, yes it is, and it always will be as we see playing the game in Ocarina of Time. But if you're thinking of a cycle, like the circular letter O, think of this as a capital letter Q. It's still a cycle, round and round it goes, but we now know where the song came from. Or maybe this all just makes sense in my head. Now granted, this isn't the only theory about the origins of the song. Another theory actually ties in with one of Nintendo Black Crisis's theories he did on the inevitable timeline, meaning there are certain things and events destined to happen by the hands of fate itself that will happen no matter what. The Song of Storms could be one of these things that simply came to be by the hand of destiny, kind of like a Link being born every time stuff gets real bad. But eh, that sounded a little too easy to me. But what did you think? Was the Song of Storms conducted by Flat, who literally is said to have conducted the song in Majora's Mask, or did it simply come to be by the will of fate itself? Let me know in the comments below. Hey you guys, thank you so so much for watching. Once again, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already with that bell icon to stick around for all the juicy good stuffs to come and trust me, there's gonna be a lot. As always, huge thanks to my amazing patrons, including three, count them, three new additions. Robly Bobbly, sorry if I butchered that, Germ and Zanny Anderson. You guys seriously make my day every day and I can't thank you enough for that. If you're interested in getting your name up here and access to some exclusive content that will be coming soon, check out the links in the description below. Also down there are links to my social media sites like Twitter and Discord server, so connect with me there too, if you want to. That's all I've got for you this time. I hope you have a great rest of your day. This is Mass Nintendo Bandit, signing out. Peace!